All right, everybody. Another Think or Swim video. So I spent the last few days kind of cleaning things up. I've uh, been trying to put together some more charts that focus on the macro side of things, right? Instead of constantly looking at, uh, say, the S&P itself or going through the indexes, uh, looking at things from a uh, kind of a, a broader perspective and how all of these markets are intercorrelated and where the weaknesses are. And so as a thinkorswim video, constantly trying to find new ways to help you guys use this platform better. This one's a little bit about housekeeping. So in the upper right corner of the screen, you can see where it says emerging markets versus developed markets. And it has a white box. Well, that white box is telling me that I've got one chart grid. And I could open that grid up and I could do 36 grids in total, right? But that that one box is just showing me that I'm, I'm only looking at one grid. Notice that I have a lot of uh, columns here. And this is offering me a, a look at my saved charts. Saved charts are kind of nice because it not only saves all of your colors, all of your settings, it also saves all of your indicators. It saves your chart exactly how you want that chart to be saved so that even after you're using it if you make changes that you really don't want to keep or say you screw it all up you can just reset it right back to where it was when you started using it this morning so for an example my five minute intraday versus uh, or my 15 minute intraday versus the uh, the daily chart I actually have that misnamed so perfect, I get to show you guys how I want to do this. This is a 15 minute versus a daily. And I want that saved in my list. So I'm going to click here, save grid as, and I'm going to update mine to say 15 minutes. Now I'm going to go back to that other one that said five minutes. And I'm actually going to change the chart to five minutes. So now I've got a five day, five minute and a daily chart. And now I'm just gonna save that grid as a five minute daily. So that if I wanted my 15 daily, then I've got it here. And if I want my five daily, I've got it here. Now that's not too bad, right? That's pretty simple, pretty basic. I've also just got my normal everyday uh, year to date chart. I tend to run a lot of year to date charts. I like this point of view at this time of the year. Obviously, you know, say in January, it's not such a great chart, but once we really get into the year, it, it works pretty good for me. A market profile chart. The chart that I use during my morning briefing just all of these saved charts. So let's put one together, right? I want to come up to the top here and it should have a spot where we can reset everything. And I'm just going to go in the upper left, put in a name. And this is a year-to-date default chart. Notice there's no name up here. It's not offering me any indication that there's something saved. So if I wanted to create a chart at this point and then save it as a special kind of chart, I want to start doing that work now. So like this sidebar, I'm not really interested in having that sidebar there, but I do want the news. And I do want my phase score. So I'm going to turn both of those on first and then click this box and get rid of that sidebar. And then, of course, we just scrunch that down. All right. And then, um, you know, say we want to add a couple of indicators. I'll just use some presets. No, we don't want that preset.
Maybe we'll just go in and add some studies. We'll add a dynamic price line and two moving averages. I'm pretty good with that. So at this point, we've made changes to a chart. We've kind of got it set up how we wanted. And now we want to name it. Now, if you've been working with computers and you, you, you're you comfortable with what I'm going through, you could probably jump ahead in this video. But if computers really aren't your thing, one of the most important parts about proficiently using a computer is file management. Um, you know, if you own your own home, you've probably got a checklist of things that you do. You clean the gutters, you know, you, you maintenance the water heater. You know, you've got these things that you go through all the time with your car. You know, you, you get the tires rotated, change the oil, you check all of your fluids. Those kind of routine maintenance is how things last longer. It's how you recognize problems sooner. It's how you maintain things, right, and keep them running proficiently. Computers are absolutely no different in that regard, and so is your think or swim. You can really bog it down if you have just a bunch of junk saved everywhere. Plus, you waste a lot of time hunting around for this stuff that you know is there somewhere if you could just remember where you put it. So file management is a really big deal. If I click this box again, you can see I've got a list of things, and maybe to you, my list might not make a whole lot of sense, but to me, it makes perfect sense. I know exactly what I'm looking at here. That's going to be the idea when you go to save your chart. Name it something that you understand so that when you are looking for it again later on, you'll be able to find it easily. Now, a few tips when it comes to naming things. Notice I'm using the exclamation point here. I'm using a dollar sign here. I've got the percent sign there. If I go a little deeper, you can see where I've got a more complex symbol. What that allows me to do is group a set of charts in one area, no matter what the name is, right? Because if it's alphabetized, which these are, then if I'm just randomly throwing names together, they're not all going to be bunched together. But if I use one of those symbols, like an exclamation point, all of my exclamation point saved charts will be in a group. And all of my dollar sign charts will be in a group. Now, there's no rhyme or reason to it. There's no reason I used a dollar sign on one group over another, right? And, and you can use more than one. You could have like a $1 sign and then a $2 sign, then a $3 sign. It really doesn't matter, right? The idea is that you're trying to group everything together so that you can find it again later and that everything is neat and organized for you. So on that macro top down that we were talking about, if we were to go in and we want to check, say consumer discretionary versus consumer staples, this chart setup in the top portion is the SPX on a weekly time frame, And in the bottom, it is actually comparing the XLY to the XLP. And since the XLY is consumer discretionary and the XLP is consumer staples, then we say discretionary versus staples. It's important that we recognize how this indicator is uh, coded so that we know which direction is which. And what I mean by that is here, the white line is going up and the S&P was going up, and the white line was going down, and the S&P was going down. So if I'm looking at discretionary versus staples, which one is strong when this indicator is going up, and which one is strong when the indicator is going down? Well, the, the name that is put in there first, that will be the one that is strong when the indicator is rising. And whatever name is second, that will be the one that is strong whenever the indicator is going down. So we can see in the last few weeks that 
consumer staples has actually been stronger than consumer discretionary. And we're getting close to a weekly crossover on that 20 line. If you're interested in the indicator that I'm using to do that, it's called price ratio. It's not a custom indicator. If you just go onto your Thinkorswim and type in price, you'll see it starts to pop up price ratio. And then when you open it, you just choose what it is that you want to see. And I wanted XLY versus XLP. The moving averages, you can kind of choose for yourself what you want. I set mine to a 2200 or a, a 2050, excuse me. So the 20 is green and the 50 is orange as my normal moving average colors generally are. And there you go. That's consumer discretionary versus consumer staples. And from a macro point of view, what we want to recognize is consumer discretionary is a risk on sector in a bullish market or when people are are frivolous with their spending, we'll see consumer discretionary much stronger than we would staples, right? Staples, household goods, foods, nah, that, that's not a risk on, that's a risk off situation. So while we've had the S&P rallying here in the last few weeks, right, we've been kind of coming off of those lows since mid-June. If we were to pair that with what we've been seeing down in the lower portion of the chart here with this pair, pair group, We've been uh, strong in state or in uh, consumer discretionary going with it, right? So consumer discretionary, risk on. The market rallying, risk on. And we're coming up into a resistance zone, something absolutely that we want to be aware of. But that's just one data point, right? And it makes sense that we're seeing a risk on appetite with the S&P rising. That makes perfect sense. Nothing wrong there. But let's go a little deeper. What else do we got? We have growth versus value. Um, domestic stocks versus international stocks. We've got emerging markets versus developed markets. All of these are just different ways to get a look at what's going on out there. Um, one that really stands out to me oftentimes is information technology versus energy. Now, when we had that COVID low and then the rally back out of it, when we reclaimed the COVID high, energy really started to take over. And so we had this crazy squeeze, just an absolute monster, unsustainable rally once we broke through those COVID highs. And energy was getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Then when the S&P finally topped out and began to fall, the scope and speed and strength of energy picked up even more. And we've been moving to the downside. But since that mid, that early week in June, we've turned things around and we've now seen information technology starting to uh, perform better than energy. Now, I don't really want to make this video, you know, a, a video on analyzing macro market conditions. The idea here is I wanted to show you guys how to set the chart up, how to save your work, how to go back and reference it later and work on naming systems. Now, I've still got a little bit of naming systems left to do. I've been cleaning house and, you know, putting all this together. But uh Take the opportunity, and, and believe me when I tell you, you're not going to get it taken care of your first try. It's It's been a process for me, and, and I'm sure it is for everybody else. It's a process to get to the point where you're as organized as you would like to be. Plus, you have to remember where these things are, right? And if you've never had these things in a particular place, first you have to make the place, then put the stuff in the place, and then go back to that place often enough to begin to remember that that's where it is. And until you do that for a while, all of this will still be very new and it will still be uh, complicated and clunky and you're going to fumble it around a little bit. But repetition is key. So one of those repetitions things, when I am using my Thinkorswim, 
if we go to the upper left corner, there's the trade tab. Well, interestingly enough, the four categories here, pairs, active, futures, and forex, each one of those is a chart dynamic that you can use. It is something that you can set and put into a pre-saved situation. And then every time you go back to that spot, it's saved exactly how you want it. So that's four additional places where you can have pre-saved, ready-to-go charts all the time. And I have taken full advantage of that. Over the last year, I've been using Forex Trader to show this chart set up right here. It's a TPO and a volume profile chart preset at 10 days on a 30-minute candle. Every time I want to see this grid, it doesn't really matter what name I'm looking at. If I want this grid, I know that I can go to Forex Trader. Now, sometimes Thinkorswim will reset my all my settings, and it's going to happen to you too. So you want to be able to save that, right? You want to put that away and have it saved somewhere so that the next time you come in and you go to your Forex Trader, if it has been reset on you, no big deal. You can put it back to how it was. So I'm going to reset mine for a moment and show you probably what yours looks like, right? It probably looks like this. Well, if you're not using any of this, then why not get rid of it and put something in there that you are willing to use? So I'm going to go into my pre-saved chart. I want my uh, TPO and volume profile for the 10-day, 30-minute. And there we go. All right, we can check, make sure I'm on my 10-day, 30-minute. I've got uh, volume profile in green and TPO in blue. And uh, just like that, I have my things back to where they were. Now, I'm actually going to make a slight adjustment to that. Get rid of the sidebar. That kind of drives me crazy. And uh, maybe come in and adjust one of my floor pivot indicators. Show that um, the previous week line. And uh, that maybe that previous week low too. There we go. So just like that, right? I can now come back in, save the grid. And the next time I come to this grid, it will be just like this. And if Thinkorswim happens to reset it, then I can just go back in and pull that chart back out of my saved settings. Futures Trader, I leave set up like this. It's a five-day, five-minute grid, although sometimes I tend to expand it beyond five days. And it's got a volume profile on every single day instead of reading all of the days with a single profile. And then I have a TPO profile for the last day showing. I always have my chart set up here like this. It's the way that I like it. Um, but... I actually had made a new one with a volume profile. So we want to go in and look at TPO volume profile. And um, we want a five day, five minute, which I know I have in there, right? I'm surprised it's not showing here where it's supposed to. TPO and volume profile, and it's supposed to have a, a five day on there. This is that organization that I was telling you about. When you get something out of place, like right now, I know there's something out of place. I'm missing a chart that should be there. And it's not a big deal. I can either track it down or I can make a new one. It's the idea that, hey, I'm missing a chart that should be there. Right now, there it is. Volume profile, 10-day, 30-minute. Volume profile, 20-day, 60-minute. And volume profile, 5-day, five 5-minute. Five so that's the one that I want. And this one. It does not have the uh, TPO on it, and that's okay. So these are a part of that cleanup that I haven't got to yet. And uh, you want to you want to go in and make sure that you're getting rid of the old charts that you're not using anymore so you don't have this problem, right? You want everything nice and neat and loaded and organized so that when you bring it up, it's exactly what you want. 
Otherwise, you spend a lot of time every day trying to recreate charts and take indicators off and put indicators on and change your time frames and adjust your settings and adjust your colors. Ah, oh, it's a mess, right? And it eats up a lot of your time, especially when all you're really trying to do is get your chart analyzed so you can get that trade on. So take the opportunity to save these things. Now, um, I've covered something like this before, but if you're trying to look at multiple indicators at the same time, don't clutter your chart. Just spread those indicators out onto different charts. So for an example here, I've got the Bollinger Bands and I've got a Stochastics in the bottom. But I, I want to also see some moving averages. So what I've got here is a four grid chart saved, right? And if I just hit that arrow, I can go to the next chart. So now I've got a 3.8 moving average built as a cloud on a daily chart. And then here, I've got a 21.55 moving average built as a cloud on a daily chart. And then here, I've got a 100-200 in a cloud on a daily chart. Now you can imagine if I put all of those on one chart, it would just be a cluttered up mess. And I wouldn't really be able to do my job. I just, it would just be so distracting and, and nasty looking. But yet here, everything is nice and clean and neat. I have enough information here to work with and I can move to the next chart and perform my analysis there. And then one thing that I like to do is take something like this and keep all of my settings, but drop it to another time frame. So this one is the daily chart for an example, right? And I'm gonna actually just kick it out onto this time frame for a minute because it's better to, to uh, do what I'm about to do from here. So first I'm gonna save it. And I'm gonna reference it that I'm on a daily. And since I've done that, I now have an old one that I need to get rid of. So I wanna get rid of that. They're alphabetized. So I can just go down to uh, the S's, get rid of this. Now, I wanna start changing things. So I'm gonna go to maximize cells and I'm gonna change all of them in the grid at the same time, because I don't have to go in and do it four times. Change it to the 20 day, 60 minute, and then uh, make sure you put it back to normal. Take it out to this chart. And now I'm gonna go and save grid. as a 60 minute. And now just like that, I've got two different time frames to work with and I don't have to mess with that daily chart. It'll stay exactly the way that I want it to stay. And uh, this one will stay on the time frame that I want it to stay. And I don't have to swap back and forth, All right? So it's just a little bit of that work. Now, when it comes to saved charts, you can also save your study groups. Uh, that can save you a lot of work if you're using indicators in a group constantly. So for an example, if I'm on the basic daily here, I have no indicators on my chart. And if I happen to drop down to the 15 minute now and I want indicators, well, I can come in and I can use some preset indicators like my daily simple moving averages. If I want those daily moving averages published here on my intraday chart, I clicked one button and I loaded all of these indicators with the colors that I want, the line types that I want, everything exactly how I want, ready to go. Now, when it comes to that, I mean, you can really trick this thing out a little bit, and, and this is really great. So the morning briefing, for an example, I have a lot of indicators here, but notice how it's shaded and uh, almost invisible there. The lines are just really, really light. Well, I want them that way. I don't want all of these lines really bright and really distracting. So I went in and I edited all of the settings to get it exactly how I wanted it. And then I saved it. And now these labels, these bubbles, they're not really bright and they don't hide price action. So if price happens to go through that area, I will be able to see right through it. And if I want to see the lines, then sure, I can do that, you know, it just takes a little bit of focus, like my VWAP line. I want VWAP on there all the time, but sometimes it just seems like it's in the way, right? Well, this way I can still see my lines and I don't have to worry about everything being too bright. 
So again, really take the time and believe me when I tell you, oh my gosh, it's going to take time. It takes time to really put all this together. Do a little bit at a time, save your work and get used to going back to that same location again and again and again. Once you teach yourself that that's where these things are at, you will be a lot faster, a lot more proficient in what it is that you're doing. Because it's that's really, that's what it's all about, right? Being able to do your job as efficiently as possible, as easily and as quickly and uh, consistently as you can. These four grids, Forex, Futures, Active Trader, and Pairs, once you get them set up the way that you want and you start to teach your brain that that's where that chart is that you're looking for, your life is going to be so much easier. So for an example, my pairs trader tab, I always have these nine sectors saved here. I always have them here. If Thinkorswim resets this chart, I come back in and I reset it my way. And I always have this. It's been here for over two years. And whenever I want to see all nine sectors, risk on, midline, and risk off, I can come here. I know that I can come here. I don't have to go in here and fiddle with a bunch of things. I don't have to build this out. It's ready to go every day. I can just go to Paris Trader and I have it. And just to make sure, I've got it saved, right? I've got daily, daily expanded, midline, risk on, risk off. I've got it for the hourly. I've got it for um, the minutes. So however I want to do it, I've got it. It's all ready to go, right? If I want to go in and just look at the midline, I can just come in and look at the midline, right? This is the idea behind being proficient in, in what it is that you're doing. Here's my risk on on the hourly, just like that. No, no struggle, no mess. I got it. I'm ready doing it. So yeah, it takes time, but the time that you spend putting all this together now, I promise you, you'll get it back and you'll save so much time going forward because you'll have all of this stuff just lined up and ready to go for you. Um, and the, the more you do it, the quicker you'll be at it. All right. So just wanted to update the video list, add this to the video discussion. Work on saving your charts, whether you're working on groups such as Monsters of Tech or, you know, setting up phase scores, putting together, you know, your macro analysis, put all of that together and then start working on your study sets so that you have pre-built, ready-to-go study sets that you can just activate at a push of a button and uh, do some housekeeping, clean up a lot of those old charts, those old saved things that you're not using anymore, help free up your thinker swim and make it run faster. All right, everybody, I appreciate your time, and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.